Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Real Hope Conversations. I'm your host, Abby McFarlane, and today we are starting, it's so exciting, starting our first deep dive into Acts. Over the next couple of editions of the devotional, we will be looking at every chapter of Acts and really exploring how God um, called Paul and the disciples to go out into all nations and the beginnings of the church, which we now know of, and this revolution that happened around the world. So it is exciting, it is inspiring, and hopefully we'll be able to carry this torch that we learn about in Acts onto planting seeds of hope and light and love and Jesus's love around the world as we too journey together as we continue to discover God. And today I am joined by none other than Ben McKechn. Abby McFarlane, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. <laughs> Such a polite person. I try. You I do, try. you really we, do. We both try to be polite to one another. <laughs> we do, and other people, and, <laughs> and, and other uh, people. And absolutely, and other people. It's been a while. It, it, has, it has been. I, was trying, I don't know why I was mentally trying to work out how long it's been. I don't know, it has been. I agree with you, yes. It's been a while yes. since we've sat and been able to have this type of discussion. Yeah, true. I think the last one we did was over the computer over thing. The com- yeah. Technology. Technology. Stuff. Here we are. The internets, the interwebs, the interwebs, as you say. Yeah. People like to call it that. They do. Anyway, they do. Book of Acts. Book of Acts. <laughs> so, Acts for you, like, it starts really with the ascension of Jesus back in like up into heaven. Like that's where we start in chapter one. Yeah, you can't really miss it. It's like a couple of verses in there, bang. Bang, and it's like the start of the call for the disciples to go out and continue to share the message of Jesus Christ. And you have framed it so beautifully in your devotional <laughs> um, about it being like Memento, the movie. I haven't seen the movie Memento. Haven't you? I haven't. Oh, well then, and I'm sure other people haven't either, but I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it. No. Really? No, don't look at me so blankly. Abby I'm McFarlane. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm falling, failing in pop culture. My goodness me. Uh, so it was out in the year 2000. Australian yeah. actor Guy Pearce was in it. The director is a guy called Christopher Nolan. I'm, ref- I'm mentioning that because he's, he's the guy. The Batman The Batman dude. guy. Okay. The Dark Knight films yeah. and Dunkirk, Inception, big yeah. deal. But before that, he made Memento. Why Memento? Why Acts chapter one yeah. reminds me of Memento is without giving too much away about Memento, <laughs> It's told backwards. So you actually start at the end in Memento. It's amazing. And, and it sort of unfurls backwards. And so you get more information as it goes. So you understand, well, why it's ended up here at the start. It's kind of confusing. Yeah. And I felt like that a little bit when I was looking at Acts chapter one again, because as you mentioned, it starts yeah. with the ascension of Jesus, which sounds a little bit like a grand finale. Yeah, it at does. that point, like it's the start of something. You get this sense of there's something going on. Jesus is risen from the dead. That's amazing. He's given official proof to everybody that he is who he says he is. He's defeated death. Great. Like, let's go. Yeah. And then he goes off to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> like, ah, oh. like, I'm not saying that's a downer. I'm just saying yeah. that like, well, that's a bit of an unexpected way to start something. Yeah. So the, the link with Memento is just that to me, it seems like it's kind of the end is the beginning is the end is the beginning. Beginning is the end. It's all a bit yeah. topsy turvy. Because as much as it does seem like a grand finale, as you mentioned in the intro, and as most people would be well aware if you've read Acts in any living memory, is it is the beginning of something. It's the end of Jesus here on earth and his earthly ministry, but it's the beginning of the earthly ministry of Jesus' followers. And that's what we then go on to reveal and what we'll be sharing in Real Hope Devotionals over the the next while. Yeah. So... The first chapter, Jesus is ascending, but he says something about the Holy Spirit. He does say something about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Good memory. <laughs> Thank Abby. you. Thank it's you. In, it's in red and all that, uh, yeah. it, depending on yeah. your Bible version. Mine's in red. Um, yeah, um, this, this is a little bit of a segue, but uh, that reminds me of, I remember hearing uh, as a sermon or reading a book or something years ago that really helped me with my understanding of, if you ever ask that question of why did Jesus go? Yeah. Like, why didn't Jesus just stick around? Jesus is God here on earth. That's amazing. Wouldn't it be cool if Jesus stuck around? I think it would have been. But he says in John 14, 15, 16, through those chapters, 
he mentions that the Holy Spirit's going to come. And you're right here in Acts, yeah. Jesus again says the, to the disciples, I'm leaving, but the Holy Spirit's going to come. What I heard years ago in a sermon or a book or something was that Jesus had to go so the Holy Spirit could come. And where, uh, without trying to get into it too much, you know, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit united in the Trinity, yeah. what we call the Trinity, God three in one. For if Jesus had stayed, then it seems as if the Holy Spirit couldn't come and do its thing in us, in our hearts, if he was still around. Yeah. I think I'm reading into that correctly. Yeah. So the power that the early disciples were given in the power of the Holy Spirit and then what believers in Christ have now because of the Holy Spirit is possible because Jesus ascended and went to God and it was and the Holy Spirit was sent down from God to yeah. us. So effectively we have Jesus living in us and I, I think I'm right in going so far as to say maybe Jesus couldn't be living in us if he was still here yeah. on earth. So the grand finale of Jesus' earthly mission is this incredible beginning of the spread of the Holy Spirit, yeah. which as in we know from the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was given at different times, yeah. but it was often given to particular prophets. They're often called in the Old Testament, sometimes kings, sometimes judges, but really select people for select tasks. Yeah. And here, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit's going to come in a few days after he has ascended. The disciples should wait for that to come. Yeah. And when it does come, it is going to empower them to be his witnesses, his disciples, his messengers, not just in the nearby surrounds, but across yeah. the rest of the world, which is how we in Australia 2,000 years later yeah. know anything about this. So from the Old Testament, Holy Spirit handed down to certain people after Jesus has come and then gone and the Holy Spirit arrives, boom, it's this explosion yeah of Holy Spirit upon anyone who calls on the name of Jesus and seeks to be saved. And like that's in within the first couple of sentences in the start of the book of Acts. What a way to start. Like, yeah, it's not a bad beginning. Not a like, bad not beginning. A, not a bad beginning. I think I just understated <laughs> the start of the book of Acts. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad beginning. It's actually a pretty mind-blowing beginning. That's better. In And it takes place, as you said, in the first couple of sentences of the book of Acts. And we know that Acts really does chronicle the beginning of the church, which the Holy Spirit is such a huge part of. Yeah, including when we, and particularly when we get to chapter two, which yeah. many people, again, even if they can't remember where this is in the Bible, you know this event, Pentecost, yeah. when the Holy Spirit comes down on this huge gathering of people from all nations and places speaking all sorts of different languages yeah. and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit like flames upon their heads, this like amazing symbol of the presence of God and, and the words of God and the words of the good news of Jesus being spoken across the nations. Yeah. That happens in the next chapter. And the first couple of chapters of Acts and as we see going across the rest of the book of Acts, let alone throughout the New Testament, the presence of the Holy Spirit being there to empower, to, to um, provide followers of Jesus yeah. with the ability to do what they're going to do. And one of the things that stands out to me about those first couple of chapters is how the early disciples, uh, like Peter, for example, who gives the first sermon effectively yeah. in the Christian church, and that's recorded in Acts chapter 2. But there's a lot of uh, credit being given not just to Jesus, but to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the early followers of Jesus, and they're able to do some things that Jesus was able to do, like healing miracles. Yeah. They were able to do that. But they weren't running around saying, look at us, we're awesome. Look what we can do. Yeah. They, like Jesus, said, it's not so much about the healings, which are amazing. It's about what those healings point towards. And they constantly pointed back to the power of the Holy Spirit that's come because Jesus is who he says he is that forgiveness is now being offered from God to us in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can come to God seeking salvation. Jesus has done it for us. All of this equation yeah. coming together in this movement of the early church and the leaders of that early church movement did not say it was all about them at any point. Yeah. They just like almost were at pains to point to you're empowered in the Holy Spirit because Jesus is who he says he is. Yeah. And that was upheld by what's in the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament now, 
they often go back to that of like the scriptures said and they keep joining the dots of that. Yeah. All in the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. that they like totally give credit to all the way through. When I think they might have been at risk, let's say, of getting a big head yeah. about the stuff that they were doing. Yeah. There is so much for us from us for us to learn from Acts, particularly as we are also called to go out and share the good news of the gospel with the nations. There is so much for us, from us to learn from the very beginnings of the church and from the disciples and the followers of Jesus and how they went out and ministered into situations that and into communities and into cities that were vastly opposed to Jesus and to faith and saw massive revivals. You even describe it as a revolution across the world. There is so much for, for us to learn. What are the things that you take from those first five chapters of Acts that encourage you and maybe challenge you in your walk? I think I find it more of a challenge and in which is the encouragement, yeah. right? And But uh, the challenge is like at the end of chapter two, you see uh, early Christians, it seems like several hundred, maybe yeah. something like that, um, coming together and sharing everything that they have, bringing everything in common yeah. and, and this real community vibe, yeah. which goes on in some aspects of my life, but not entirely as this is describing yeah. here. Like this is like really intense to me, it sounds like Christian fellowship and family. Uh, I'm not convinced that this is therefore an indication of how all of us are called to live as yeah. followers of Jesus. This was a particular time and a really particularly intense moment in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit across the planet. But there is something in this that's yeah. very instructive, like, you know, the rest of yeah. God's word. There's something very instructive in this about how we would then go about living our lives as brothers and sisters in Christ, let alone then when it comes to, which is getting back more to your question about how we would then share the good news of yeah. Jesus. So uh, one of the challenges for me is how to live this out in a Christian community, yeah. uh, particularly along the lines of the early church in Acts. The sharing of the good news, um, I'm really encouraged by if I can call it this, the simplicity of the message. So on, well, on the one hand, you get the complexity of the early disciples, sermons or discussions they were having in different places they went to. Yeah. And they were really trying to bring together like the history of God and God's people in this world and, you know, funneling it down into, and this guy, Jesus, who you crucified actually is the Messiah you've been waiting for. Um, yeah. and, and like, <laughs> Uh, and the fact they had the boldness to do that. It's the boldness, right? I think that's the thing that I go, they were so bold. Like there was no unwavering, no stopping them. They stepped into situations where they should have, where, where their lives were at risk. Where I would have run the other way. Yes. And you're right, they went into it. And, and they went into it, I think, with a humility, but with a, a real assurance about yeah. what they were saying. And so the complexity of presenting all of that to people, particularly those who it seems like may have been involved in or at least or possibly like one generation and no, not even generation because this is like days after Jesus yeah. ascended. So this could be the people that killed Jesus and you're fronting up to them and saying, yeah. well, you got it wrong like in a massive way. Yeah. So there's all that complexity. But the simplicity, I think, is encouraging, which is like Peter at the end of this first sermon when people re respond to this and like want to turn and change and like come to God for forgiveness and the simplicity of repent and believe yeah. of, of, of letting people know that it is as quote unquote simple as that in the book of Acts and other places in the New Testament that all the complexity of all the ideas and trying to gather up all this information and even conversations that we're having now we can almost overcomplicate it yeah and then go going back to the punchline Maybe you should like memento start at the punchline and yeah. then work the other way. Repent and believe, repent and believe. Yeah. And if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. There's a remarkable and, and joyful and revolutionary simplicity to that, that yeah. possibly, not even possibly, I overlook. Yeah. Like, I overthink, how am I going to share this with people? How can I be like the early Acts church? How can I boldly step out yeah. like they were doing in all kinds of situations like you mentioned yeah. before all sorts of people 
and loads of pushback. <laughs> Heaps I think of that's pushback. It. Heaps of pushback. Like, and it even mentions in the first five chapters that they were mocked because yep. of what they were saying. Yep. And they chucked in jail. Exactly. But they still persevered. Like, I have to think, I don't, maybe it's a weakness in character, but if I was put into jail, I, that would have. That that would that make was, me that would stop you. Yeah, I would make me back up a little bit. Like yeah. take take a few steps back and reconsider my approach. Maybe do the softly softly approach, not the boldly boldly approach. That that would be me. I think that's me too. Yeah. And and so looking at this in in Acts, yeah, circles back to you. That's the challenge and the encouragement to pray in the spirit yeah. for the power of the spirit that was in these early followers of Jesus. Yeah. It's the same spirit at work in us. That same spirit will cause us to do all kinds of stuff that I think will be different. There's different situations, different relationships, different people than what were going on here. But that's been the case throughout the history yeah. of God's salvation movement in yeah. the spirit, right? So it's easy to say, okay, well, I'm different to Acts, so therefore I probably won't be found in the same situation. Okay, that's fine but isn't one of the strong principles out of yeah. it to speak boldly proclaim boldly the good news that you have been saved by and for and don't you want to proclaim that to the world yeah. and i constantly find that a challenge because it's easy for me to say that right here right now but yeah. to do that with people particularly those that don't know the yeah. good news or reject it i also like you want to just run in the other direction and yeah. so Going back to this, it is like, uh, <laughs> like, like I think this is how I'm meant to be. Not think this is how I'm meant to be. I don't have to go and start a church or or a Jesus movement, yeah. let's say, because Jesus started that movement and the Holy Spirit's empowering that. I'm participating yeah. in it, but the participation here, yeah, even when chucked in jail, even when getting broken out of jail, and yet they they stay there, the disciples, because they want to further proclaim the good yeah. news that they were put in jail for in the first place. You'd be getting out of that city as quickly <laughs> as possible. Yeah, you'd be hightailing it all yeah. over the place. It's a great thing they didn't because <laughs> they helped <laughs> to spread a message that, yeah, if, if left to me, I fear that that message would have been buried in the sand yeah. somewhere. And like, I'm not going to stop God's, movement right yeah. god, god would thankfully use somebody else but yeah. but the the the, the response there's a responsibility there upon me that yeah. i think acts bears out upon all of us who are followers of jesus in the power of the spirit yeah which is share the good news and again i say that simply and straightforwardly now but i find that really yeah. difficult to yeah. do still really difficult do to do uh and one of the amazing, I think it's ironies of the start of the book of Acts is how there is a positive response to the sharing of the good news of Jesus to his disciples in relation to things the disciples are doing, which is what Jesus did, but he got killed for it. Yeah. And so, like, what's happening? Like, <laughs> yeah. like weeks ago, this yeah. bloke who said he, yes, I'm the Messiah, and, like, and then people killed him. And then his followers are coming forward doing similar things and people are starting to hear the message. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't even know what to do with that. No. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a mind trip right there, processing, processing that. Yeah, and, and that's in the early minutes of the book of Acts. Yeah. Like, well, and, then it just, and it's a little bit of a, um, like a, a structure or a, a pattern that emerges yeah. across Acts in the early chapters and then it basically just unfurls in a similar way of people responding well, people not responding well, the yeah. disciples being invited places, getting to share, people flaring up about it, people giving their lives to Jesus. And, but then, but then the, the ripple effects of it yeah. are quite dramatic by the time you get to the end of the book of Acts where Paul is and who Paul is addressing. Yeah. Is, you can see already that Jesus, um, uh, what he what he left his disciples with and instructed them about and said the Holy Spirit would help them to do yeah like is already demonstrated by the end of the book of Acts which yeah. is, is what like uh, like 10 20 years into the future yeah. a relatively short period of time but it's quite remarkable to see that the promise, the assurance that Jesus left yeah. his disciples with, because they must have been nervous, surely. You'd have to be, or wouldn't questioning. you? Like, you've just seen Jesus ascend into heaven at the right hand of God. 
but you've also just experienced what I can only think of as traumatic to see Jesus, the Messiah, crucified in front of you and then to have gone through probably a huge grief because he was buried and you thought that he was going to not, he was not going to die. You thought he was going to conquer that. I would have had to think that, that you're not going to die on the cross. And then he did die on the cross and then he was buried and then he raised to life. Like there's, there's a whole series of emotions that would have happened in that three day period. And then to have walked with him and learned from him and had instruction from him for 40 days. And as you said, I would have been thinking, okay, Jesus, well, what are we doing now? Where are we going? How are you going to continue the ministry? And then he goes, no, I'm going to go up and be at the right hand of my father. You're going to be. Yeah, you're going to continue it. Like that, that's a weight of responsibility. And then, okay, and we are going to go boldly. Like there, there is an infilling of the spirit that had to have happened to release them to go do that. It's a really powerful testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You're right, because if you stop and think about what you just described and how we might feel, think, act at a time like that, like, wow, it took the Holy Spirit to make this happen. Yeah. That Jesus, God, leaving it in the hands of mere mortals to spread the incredible gospel truth. And as we're describing about ourselves, it would fall at the first hurdle if it was yeah. just left to me in the power of myself. Yeah. And one of the great things about the book of Acts, among many great things about the book of Acts, is that really, really, really strong testimony of it is in the power of the spirit yeah. that this is happening. So this isn't just people with fancy words or people who are like stronger than you or have got more confidence or just better speakers than the rest of us. Yeah. It's because Jesus left, the Holy Spirit came and provided them the internal God breathed gumption yeah. to go forth and proclaim the good news of Jesus. Yeah. I think that's an encouragement for us as well. We're not, we're not called to go and share the good news in our own strength. We're called, we, we have the Holy Spirit with us, in us. And I think the Holy Spirit is not just something that is in Acts. Like I think it's easy for us to read through this and go, oh, they had the Holy Spirit. No, friend, you have the Holy Spirit as well. And you're not going and sharing the good news by yourself. You have the Holy Spirit with you to enable, to encourage and to inspire you. And as we read through Acts, can I challenge you to not think about it as just a story, but to actually think about it as a manual for us as we continue to walk out our faith in a very broken world um, and to be inspired and encouraged by the beginnings of the church these fellowship of believers, the way they lived out their life and the way that they ministered into the lives of people, whether that be people accepting Christ in that moment or whether it be a planting of a seed in that moment. So this is going to be an exciting couple of devotional series editions because already I'm excited and inspired by five chapters not even five chapters, two chapters. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty inspiring chapters. They are very inspiring. And I think that it's easy for us. Everybody's probably read through Acts, but have you really read through Acts? Yeah. And you're right about pointing out that uh, it's not just a document. It's living, breathing history. Yeah. But I like that expression of it being like a manual. Yeah. And it can take a little bit to work out. And I'm not even sure exactly how to do it, how it applies yeah. now. But I'm totally with you about uh, it pointing to what may be possible in us in the power of the Spirit. I should put that another way. What is only possible in us in the power of the Spirit? I'm telling myself that because I have to constantly remind myself of that. Because all this stuff that goes on in the book of Acts that is handed to the disciples, the early church by Jesus. I'm like, this is great. Like, no wonder they wanted to spread across the earth and tell everyone about this. But I don't do that. Yeah. I, I don't I don't even in my street, in yeah. my block of units, I'm not doing that. I do it in fits and starts. Yeah. But not that much. And then you come back to this and the simplicity of God's promise, Jesus' promise to provide us this spirit power 
to live for them and whatever that's going to look like in these good works, good situations yep. that they've already purposed for us. Yeah. I just got to show up. Yep. And and stay true and faithful to the one who's true and faithful to me. Yeah. In the power of the Spirit, not even in the, my own power. Yeah. So I also am excited to go back to the book of Acts and slow down and look at it and think, don't just read it like an exciting kind of um, history mini series yeah. that Netflix has put together. You're like, great, I'm going to binge that. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Just like slow down and find yourself in it, in the power of the Spirit. Yeah, find yourself in it, in the power of the Spirit. Amen to that. Friend, we are learning together as we journey through Acts. So if you have questions, if you have thoughts or ponderings that you would like to share with us so that we can add them into our conversations about Acts as moving forward, please get in touch with the Real Hope team. You can go down below, click on the link, share your questions or thoughts. We will absolutely get to them in the podcast because I'm learning, Ben's learning as much as you are learning. We are in this journey together through Acts. Also, why not invite your friends, your family, your small group, your church community to join in on this discovery of Acts, to listen to the podcast, to go through the devotionals, and then maybe you could have conversations together about what you're learning about Acts, what has challenged you, how we can live lives together in fellowship as the church of Christ, and then therefore go out and minister to the world around us. Amazing thing to be doing together in community and fellowship with one another. But also don't forget, we will be here next week for another episode of Real Hope Conversations. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on any of the conversations coming up and the next conversation about Acts. But as always, I hope you have an amazing week. I hope God continues to challenge, grow and expand you, provide opportunities for you to speak into people's lives and to plant seeds of his love because that's what it's all about. I will see you here next week for the next edition of Real Hope Conversations.